2022 at the SCI 2021 here in London, UK. Today we're talking to Raytheon about the NSM missile, Hensold, who launched a new naval radar, and Thales about unmanned systems for the maritime domain. Hi, good morning. Can you please introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Gilbert Nelson. I'm the Requirements and Capabilities Lead for the Naval Strike Missile Program at Raytheon Missiles and Defense. All right, Gilbert, uh, you have a full-scale model of the NSM behind you. What's the latest with the program? Yeah, well, you probably saw the recent news uh, widely reported on the, the Marine Corps uh, fired Naval Strike Missile during large-scale exercise 21. Uh, really exciting development, just another example of how, uh, how rapidly and effectively we've been able to integrate NSM and uh, with the whole goal of delivering NSM to the Marine Corps uh, on their timeline that they desire. Uh, Gilbert, uh, I believe an announcement came out regarding uh, the Royal Canadian Navy. Can you tell us more? Yes, uh, so Canada is now the, the latest user country for NSM for the, you know, selected for the Canadian surface combatant. So that's another exciting development. Gilbert, you're showcasing uh, the NSM in a full-scale model here at the SCI. Does that mean you see the Royal Navy as a potential user of uh, the missile? Absolutely. We believe that uh, NSM is the ideal candidate to, to satisfy the requirement for the surface-to-surface uh, -surface guided weapon. And, uh, you know, to answer questions about that, we have Simon Kings here. He's the Business Development Director for Raytheon UK. Simon, good morning. Good morning. How does NSM fit uh, the SSGW requirement of the Royal Navy? So the Royal Navy is really interested in NSM. They've been out to Norway, they've witnessed the firing, and we've now begun uh, in the UK this competitive process. So last year they ran a pre-qualifying competition, and NSM and some other weapons went through the pre-qualifying stage. Uh, it then went into a pause for the integrated defence review to happen. That's happened, and as part of the defence review, it was announced that Harpoon would be replaced via this competition. And I'm expecting that competition to fully start later on this year. And obviously, NSM will be the uh, Raytheon Konsberg offering for that. I understand that uh, the schedule for the delivery of the systems is uh, very stringent, with a reported uh, in-service date uh, or delivery date uh, by the end of 2023. Are you confident that uh, you can match that uh, time frame? Well, it is very, very tight, but you'll be aware that in America, we were able to go from contract award to fitting uh, one of the US ships in under 18 months. So I think with an end date of 2023 to be in service on the first ship, we can meet that. But obviously the clock is ticking and we need to really get on with the, contra uh, the competition and the contract. And one last thing, uh, Simon, uh, should uh, the Royal Navy select NSM or would the role of uh, Raytheon UK be? So Raytheon UK is the prime for Konsberg and Raytheon in the UK and so we'd be leading that work, we'd be the prime contractor, but we're also planning to do a fairly large amount of the work in the UK. Uh, we'll obviously do the ship fit and all the rest of it in the UK, but we're also looking at uh, building part of the weapon in the UK for that program. All right, Simon, thank you very much. Thank you. So today we launched the next generation of AESA or acti Actively Electronically Scanned Antenna uh, Radar Technology. Um, it's fully gallium nitride, tile-based technology, fully solid state, software defined, so essentially future-proof, high cyber resilience and uh, aimed at uh, future threats and uh, how the threats are evolving. So there are many systems that have a very, let's say, very similar types of capabilities in theory. Uh, this radar, first of all, is coming in at a price level where you didn't normally get a 3D radar. So I think we are going to see customers opting for 3D where they previously might only have been able to afford 2D. But besides that, um, of course, that has a huge impact on life cycle costs, but in general, uh, the radar being what it is, software defined, it is really a future-proof radar as well. So you're going to get an excellent capability on day one, but following that we'll be able to drop in capability um, as time goes on, as the threat evolves, as customers' needs evolve.
Good afternoon. Can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. My name's uh, Matt Moore. I work for Talis. I look after our sort of maritime autonomy air side of our business development. All right, Matt, what are you demonstrating uh, here behind you? Okay, so what, what we're demonstrating here is a, a solution now looking at maritime wide area surveillance. We've recognised there are some areas that we can improve the ability of the naval vessels and naval uh, sur surface ships to extend the range of their sensors beyond the, where they are now to have a much greater maritime information advantage. So what we've been doing is uh, investing our time and energy with uh, Shebel, uh, working with them and using their Shebel S100 camcopter, a rotary wing unmanned uh, system to bring together a number of sensors to extend the range of the ship sensors to have a much more persistent detect, find, track, assess capability. Pull that data together, fuse that data, bring it back to the ship, integrate it into their combat management system to have a much more informed all sensor uh, maritime information picture. Uh, what's the main benefit for the sailor on board the ship? Yeah, I think the, the main benefit here is that traditionally uh, the number of sensors on the ship could detect an anomaly or an activity, but the problem is always how do you identify it, track it and assess it to have an action. What you would normally do, uh, or that's traditionally happens, is that maybe a manned asset, a manned aviation asset, would then fly once it's detected an anomaly to go and look, find, track, assess. But that has limitations in crew resourcing, their time availability, um, and the uh, system, huge system availability. Bringing in autonomous vehicles like the S100 camcopter, we can have a much more persistent availability of crews, of uh, the aircraft itself at station, uh, in the air, to have a much more wider availability. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Thank you very much, cheers. I'm now with uh, James Dickey, product line architect here at Thales uh, for the uh, MMCM program. James, uh, good afternoon. Afternoon, afternoon. Can you please remind us uh, the latest milestones for uh, the MMCM program? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're currently in the production phase after being awarded the production contract from the UK and French navies last year. Um, all things are pressing ahead, making great ground. We're handing over the equipment for formal operation this year as well, so a real success. Uh, behind us, you're showcasing uh, the uh, MyMaps uh, solution. Uh, how does uh, AI uh, has uh, its, its place in uh, modern mine warfare? Well, at the moment we're finding it's almost irreplaceable. The operators have seen the equipment in use. We've had the operational trials, huge success. The use of AI has proved its value. Automatic target recognition, as we've got behind us, leveraging the multi-aspect view from our towed sonar, is allowing us to classify mines using AI techniques before the operators even got round to the data set. So it's accelerating that mine detection workflow and the classification activity. All right, so. And so this is news to me, uh, it's uh, Bluefin 12 by uh, General Dynamics uh, Mission Systems. Um, are you partnering with, with the, the company to offer this UUV to the Royal Navy? So, so we're working with all vehicle providers across the world. At the end of the day, Talos is here to provide an end-to-end -end mine hunting and disposal capability. So vehicles like the one we've got in front of us, the Bluefin 12, absolutely a great part of the mine hunting piece side scan sonar very capable vehicle and the integration with our mission management system the mind map analysis software provides that capability so it's all about third party integration whatever the navies need to do the job all right james thank you very much okay, thank you